the reason why it's so hard to keep a woman that you like, it's almost impossible, is because of this attraction scale. And this is what I'm talking about in this video. Basically, the system, the way that the system is set up, it is almost impossible to keep a woman around that you like. And the reason why is because, I mean, it's not just me, but the reason why is when you have a woman where your attraction level is really high, I'm not sure 10 exists, because that person would have to be perfect, but when your attraction level to a woman is um, like probably seven or eight, I'm gonna put like, I'll just say, for the purpose of this video, we'll make it eight. When your attraction level to a woman is about eight or above eight, you tend to get goofy. You're too excited, you're too emotional. I'll speak for myself. If my attraction level approaches eight or goes above that, I am way too emotionally invested in that woman. And that is an issue. That's a problem because most of the time, women don't like that. When your attraction level is eight or above, you think that this woman is like, you're like, oh, you're lucky, you feel lucky to be with her. You're excited to see her. You're proud to be walking around with this woman. And as flattering as you think that would be, uh, most of the time for women, it's going to turn them off. It's going to make them suspicious of you. And it's going to make them curious as to why you're so impressed. Because this woman, I mean, you're seeing her as an eight. Her body is shaped the way you want it to be shaped. Uh, you like her personality. You like her hair. You like her face. But she knows... She sees herself in the morning before she puts on makeup. She knows she's has friends that's prettier than her. She sees chicks on Instagram that look better than her. She sees herself naked. And she's kind of wondering, like I said, she gets suspicious of wondering why. Also, she thinks this. This is another thing. She thinks because you're acting so geeked to be with her, she's wondering if maybe you don't, like, if she's out of your league. She's like, well, does he, has he never been with, like, a cute girl before? Like, what's going on with this guy? It starts to make them nervous. I recently, like last week, and I made a, I mentioned this in a previous video, I actually fumbled uh, something that was going pretty well, it was going all right, with a woman that I had a pretty high level of attraction, and the only reason why I was like texting a little bit too much, I wasn't blowing her up, but I was kind of like initiating texts a little bit too much, I was a little bit too um, over-validating when I saw her, I'd be like, wow, you look really great, you know, where did you get those shoes, you look awesome, you smell great, your hair is pretty, um, and that's a bit, that's just too much. Because you're not being uh, stoic, you're not being masculine, and you're not letting the woman come to you. And I know for a fact that I'm not the only person that has this issue because a lot of guys talk about this. It's hard to keep a woman that you like. It's hard. It's really, really difficult to get a woman that you like because, I mean, there's millions of women on the planet, billions of women on the planet, but there's probably only a small little percentage of women that are really going to tick your boxes and have your attraction level be up here in this range. So then when you, because, because you spend so much time with like five and four and so many people spend so much time here that when you get a woman that you feel is like an eight or a nine on your level of attraction, you kind of like don't know how to act. And this is why, this is actually one of the reasons why women spend so much time with like the small, a small group of men, because guys that are constantly around like women that they see as eight and nines. And I mean, I don't think 10 exists, but guys that spend a lot of time around women that they're very attracted to are just able to be more natural. And that's why I made a video called Monk Mode is Dangerous. Go back and watch that because what I'm saying here is if you go into monk mode for two years and you work on yourself and you self-improve and then you have eight pack abs and you make a bunch of money and you read a bunch of books and you think you got it all handled, when you come out of that cave of monk mode and self-improvement, you're going to be so awkward and weird around women that it, it would have been better if you just stayed out here with us for two years and just worked on, you know, worked on yourself half as much, but spent way more time with women. And this is the mistake that I made. And that's why I'm trying to tell y'all chance did that. So hopefully you don't have to go through that over here. If you could see this, this is the three things and it might be small or difficult to read, but these are really the three things that you need to worry about in terms of meeting a woman. And I'm going to get into how this relates to sugar dating right after I make this point. When you're dating, if you're dating in a traditional sense, the only three things that you need to care about is one, that the woman is cute enough. Look what I put here, cute enough. Not like a bad bitch, not an eight, nine, ten. If you are used to having bad bitches um, and you know how to handle yourself around them, that's cool. But a lot of us, I'm just going to be honest, a lot of us probably spend a lot of time in five, six, you might could get a seven. You spend a lot of time with fives because these are the easiest women. These are the women, five, six, maybe seven. These are the women that are matching you on dating apps. These are the women that will respond when you text them. These are the women that when you say, hey, do you want to hang out on Friday night? They'll say yes. They'll actually show up. These fives and sixes and sevens, you might get lucky and get a seven. 
when you get an eight, I'll speak for myself, but I know y'all hear what I'm saying. When you get an eight, matching you on a dating app, when you text her and she messages you back, when you ask her to hang out with you and she's like, yeah, I would love to. You're going to start messing up. You're going to start messing up because you get emotionally invested, or at least I will. And I know, I know I'm not the only one. So in the future, what you need to do is not worry about these eights, nines, and tens, but what you can do because you can have access to eight and nine and possibly the hypothetical 10 is this is where you sugar date. This is where you sugar date because this is going to keep you from getting too emotionally invested because you already know what it is. And this is why sugar dating is a strategy and it's a lane. I have a a video on the channel called being a sugar daddy is a lane. It's a lane because for most of us, hit the like button, please, if you understand what I'm saying. For most of us, you have, you basically, you know what kind of women you could get. You know, if you, let's, let's say, for example, that you download a dating app tonight. You get on Hinge, Bumble, whatever, tonight. You upload some photos. You actually know within a couple of days, a week or two, what types of women are going to be liking you, what types of women are going to be responding to your text messages or when you message them. It's going to be the range. I, in my opinion, I feel that all of us have a range. Uh, depending on your height, your status, your looks, your charm, whatever like that, you have a range of the type of women that you could mostly get. And I bet you, you barely one or two times in your whole life have you been able to reach above that range. I swear to God. Some people get a lot of bad bitches. Some people just be like, they gotta like that. They're tall. They're all, they've always been popular. They're like extraordinarily handsome. And they always get, I'm talking about not what, what I'm rating the woman, but what you're rating your attraction, attraction to her. So let's say you play basketball in college. You always had it like that. You always had the Jordans. You always had the crispy haircut. You happen to be six foot four. Maybe you did always have eights and nines and tens. And it's to the point where you can't even, when you're around a seven, you don't even really want to be bothered. Most of us, especially most of us watching this video, there's no shame in it. Probably the majority of women that's responding to your messages and doing all the things I say is all right here. And look, this includes four. I know this scale doesn't make sense because three is all the way down here. But most of us watching this, probably the majority of attention that you get from women where they're pursuing you or, or making it easy, here's the thing. Just when the woman makes it easy, you, you end up kind of dealing with women that you might not have if she wasn't putting herself out there so hard. So most of us watching this video, probably the majority of women we've been with in our lives, if we're being honest. If I'm lying, let me know in the comments. But I, I'd be out here. I'd be seeing what y'all be doing. Um, most of us, four, five, and six is the most of the girls that you've been dealing with. That's where you get the, the your bread and butter. And you might get lucky you got an eight. Some of y'all got lucky and you got a seven and you married her. Or you were in a long-term relationship with her or you put a kid in her and that was smart. Because I let me tell you something. I had a seven and that was probably the woman that I was the most in love with. I talk about her a lot. I hope she's not seeing this because I'm not saying that she's a seven. I'm saying my attraction level was a seven. Which is actually really high out of 10. And that is, that's kind of the sweet spot. Because the seven is where you're like, yeah, she's cool. She's cute. But you're not going to be geeked and acting out of your out of your mind. I got with a woman just last week, the last couple weeks, was seeing a woman who I saw as like an eight. It might have even been an eight and a half or a nine. If I was to show you a picture of this woman, and I might make a separate video, maybe I'll just tell a quick story. I matched with this woman on a dating app. Um, just the first two or three days I was on there, I sent her a message, and she messaged me back like instantly, immediately, and she said something like really funny. So I sent her a message about her profile. It was about a, an R&B singer that she likes. So I was like, oh, I made a little cute joke about the R&B singer. Let's just say it was Aretha Franklin. Uh, within a couple days, three or four days, it was kind of going well. We had a good um, a good amount of messages back and forth. So I say, hey, I would love to meet you. Um, would you be into that? And then she told me what days she was free. I said, okay, cool. How about let's meet up on Wednesday at seven o'clock at this place? And she showed up at that place. This woman happened to be in my opinion, way more attractive than her pictures portrayed. If I was to show you a picture of her, you'd be like, okay, that's a totally normal looking mid thirties woman. Why are you tripping so hard? But in person, like the first time I saw her, my eyes popped out of my head, like a cartoon character. I was just like, I was right here. I was up here. I was up here. I actually, it probably was nine. To be honest with you, I was at a nine with this girl. I just, everything was where I wanted it to be. She was really cool. She had a great personality. She was pretty. I liked her clothes. That might not be important to anybody, but I live in Salt Lake City, Utah, where people, the girls, even hot girls dress like day laborers out here. I don't get it. They just wear cargo pants and, and flannel shit, and they dress like they're going fishing. Like, you can be in a club on a Saturday night, and the majority of girls in there will literally be wearing, like, a fishing hat and, and some kind of, like, overalls. She could dress 
I was into that. I just liked her, man. I was really, I was up here, and you know what that meant? I started tripping. I started tripping. Number one, because I hadn't been dating. I've been in a, I wasn't calling it monk mode. I was just calling it chilling, skiing, working on myself, living my life. But I hadn't been dating, so the first time, I wish I, it, it was bad for, for me to meet a woman that I was that attracted to my first couple days on the dating app. I needed to start down here. If I would have started down here, and then I was just meeting this woman now, after I had some reps in, going on some dates, it would have been totally different. But, you know, you can't write your life story. Anyway, long story short, I fumbled that relationship, that situation, because I was too attracted to her and my emotions were too involved. And I'm sure I'm not the only person who has experienced that. Over here is what we're talking about. So basically what I'm saying is don't even worry about 8, 9, and 10 getting these types of girls. Even if you were to get one, number one, it's very difficult to meet them. Statistically, there's not that many women that you on the planet are going to be eight, nine, and ten attracted to. They're also going to want to date you back. This is where you sugar date. You sugar date in here. This is where you do PPMs. This is where you go on uh, Sugar Daddy Meet, and you hand, you handle this over there. Then, when you want to get in a relationship and have a girlfriend, you come down here. This is where you're going to be the happiest. And I I hate to say this. Some people might have talked about this before, but the best relationship you're going to have, the best relationship you're going to have, the best situation, the best cooperation, the best femininity, the best times that the girl is going to be trying to please you is when she sees you as like an eight and you see her as maybe even like a four. So when the woman is here and you're here, this right here is called attraction. That's what that's called. That's when she's texting you, blowing you up. That's when she's sending you nudes. That's when she's like, hey, when can I see you? That's when she might be like baking you cookies and bringing them to you at work and bringing you lunch. And she, I've had relationships like this. And the, the reason is because is this right here. That's, that right here is called attraction. When you're like, wow. Or when she's like, wow. And you're like, yeah, she's all right. So in your not, when, you wanna sh when you want to date women where your attraction level is eight, nine, everything like that, that's when you sugar date. When you want a girlfriend to bring home to your mom and uh, sit on the couch and cuddle with on Sundays and watch uh, fucking Hallmark movies, that's when you come here. Four and five, even four. Some people act like they don't want to date a four. Well, the four is where is that? Cute enough. Cute enough to where you could physically respond to her. Y'all know what I'm talking about, right? Cute enough to where your body, you know, will physically respond to her. You're not grossed out. Then, fun to be around. It says, this is actually more important, but if she's not cute enough, it doesn't matter. So, uh, cute enough, fun to be around. I don't know if y'all can even see that or if it's too small. Fun to be around is number two. It's really number one, but y'all understand what I'm saying. And then, this is actually kind of the massive one right here, because this is what a relationship is based on. Will have sex with you. If you focus on these three things, cute enough, fun to be around, will have sex with you, cute enough, we mess up because we'd be trying to get Eights and nines. I don't think tens exist, but it's just on the list. We mess up because we'd be trying to get bad bitches, but then it's hard to get them, like I said, and it's hard to control yourself. This is the biggest problem that I have. And it's the most frustrating for somebody like me as well because I can come across women where my attraction level is seven and eight and even like this woman at nine. I can come across them. I can meet them and we could even go out on a date or two. So I know that it's not like my physical looks or my appearance. It's the fact that I get too emotionally invested and I start like over validating, paying too much attention, texting a little bit too much, just a little bit. It wasn't like I was blowing the girl's phone up, but I was texting her, uh, like initiating like conversations every couple of days and she was responding to me. And that's just the opposite. You start to kill this. You start to kill this. And then she's, she might've been up here, but it starts to come down because she's wondering like, why is he texting me? It wasn't a bunch, but it was slightly more than she was texting me for sure. I was a little bit more expressive of my emotions with her than she was with me. And I was starting to take on a more of a, more of like a pursuing role. And that's the woman's job. So anyway, I'm not going to belabor the point too much. The reason why it's hard to keep a woman that you really, really like, and it's almost impossible to get one unless you're that guy. There's a small minority of guys watching this who don't understand what I'm saying. But most of y'all, if my content resonates with you, it's because we have similar experiences and you understand what I'm saying. It's very difficult to keep a woman around where your, your attraction level is too high. Um, because you start acting goofy. So this is where you sugar date. When you want to get eights and nines and you want to like bad bitches and walk around and do all that kind of stuff, you pay money for that. The rest of the time, just come down here and remember these three things. 
All right. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.